Now, this is an example of, of what we'd call Wiener's Law. Now, most of you probably aren't aware of Wiener's Law, but I think it's actually one of the fundamental laws that we're going to be getting acquainted with as we come into a world dominated by algorithms. And simply put, it says, automation will routinely tidy up ordinary messes, but will occasionally create an extraordinary mess. I think we're going to get efficiency from algorithms, but we're also going to get catastrophes. And we need to prepare for that, particularly as we move beyond simple statistical arbitrage and financial markets and move into a world of artificial intelligence. A world where computers can recognize objects, can track that in full motion video through time, can understand our language, and can even represent our emotions. It's a world where artificial intelligence is moving at a rapid pace, but I think one of the most exciting pieces of this is actually the world of creative machines, machines that can start to create realities, not just observing our world, but creating new worlds. And this really kind of found its home in, um, in the work initially from Ian Goodfellow in uh, generative adversarial networks. And this paper here came out in 2015. It was a fascinating paper because basically it said, look, if a human inputs text, like the bird is short and stubby with yellow on its body, the computer could interpret that and start to generate images. And this was really a breakthrough, right? Because you can now start to imagine a world that the computer's creating that didn't exist before. Now, we looked at this, and in some ways, these are kind of pixelated, right? They're not that great. And so, you know, it was a step forward, but perhaps it wasn't that big of a step. Well, if you threw more computational power at this, as researchers did a couple of years later, you actually end up with a huge step forward. This is now images being trained on the faces of celebrities and creating celebrities that never existed. And I swear that I've seen that woman on the left in a movie before. They're incredibly real. And the researchers didn't just stop at that, they went forward even further. And this year, just coming out a few months ago, hyper-realistic images of people that never existed. So we've moved into a world where we went from pixelated images in 2014 to hyper-realistic pictures of people that have never existed. Now, the scary thing is, if you look at that, you don't know if those people are real or not today. And indeed, you can go and try this out. You go to thesepeopledonotexist.com and see if you can actually figure out if these people are actually real or not. But this has moved incredibly rapidly. So this is image processing, but also we've done the same in language processing. And not just understanding language, but generating language. Now, generating language is harder than generating images, because in an image, if you get a pixel off, it's still the same picture. But in language, if you get a word wrong or even a comma, it changes the entire meaning of what you're saying. So the initial attempts on this were pretty bad. This is um, trying to generate a, um, a recipe. Chocolate pickle sauce and completely meat, chocolate pie, brown salmon and oil, add cream, meat, and another deep mixture. I don't know what that's going to taste like. I'm not going to try it. But it was kind of, it was difficult, right? Now, what came along after that um, was starting to get into some of these LSTM models. Right? And this is um, now being trained on a bunch of science fiction. Right? And it's been trained on science fiction, and its job was to write a movie script. We see H pull a book from the shelf, flip through it while speaking, then put it back. H, in the future, with mass unemployment, young people are forced to sell blood. That's the first thing I can do. And so it goes on, and the sentences have actually improved pretty markedly here. If you start reading through it, it doesn't really work between paragraphs, but the sentences are good good enough that they decided they needed to act this out, and they got a full cast of actors and started to act out this movie. And the intensity here is wonderful. And he throws me out of his eyes. And they kept acting. <laughs> it's sort of um, absurd. Maybe this, um, yeah, go and watch it. But, but you can sort of see the progression that came through. It doesn't quite make sense, but it doesn't not make sense. <laughs> 